I just, ah, it looks so damn good. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name's Pearson and behind me is my 2001 Nissan S15. And today we're gonna fit up a new radiator. For those of you who don't know, we bought this radiator uh, a little while ago and I painted the top end tanks. We painted it black. Uh, so the top is like satin black. And the reason I haven't fitted the radiator till now is I was waiting on some replacement hoses. There's a part number. So that one's for the top and this one's for the bottom. So hopefully these should fit. So now we've got the car up on ramps, it should give us a little bit more room to drain the cooler. So to drain this one, we just simply use a Phillips head on here. It started raining and uh, I might get wet. We will begin by just removing these bolts here. These are the securing brackets. There's one on each side. Remove those, then we're gonna disconnect the top hose here uh, from both the engine and the radiator just because we've got that replacement part. And then same thing, the lower hose is down here. Yeah, we need to undo this fan. So disconnect the fan from the pulley. Days of light when the world is getting darker. I have a dream where love's the only side. So take my hand, join the army of the shadows. Here it is, a nice little collection of leaves. Now this is why we're replacing it. You can just see the end tanks are uh, like a nice light gray and not black. So going to be fitting up the old shroud. So now we're just going to remove the shroud because as far as I know, this shroud should fit on this radiator. I did consider putting in thermo fans. I think the factory shroud is actually really good for cooling. I hear a lot of people when they swap to thermo fans start having issues. Obviously, that's not always the case. Maybe we'll get some thermo fans in the future. Going to go swap everything over now and look at reinstalling it. So here you can just see the thickness uh, difference between the standard radiator which is on the left and our aftermarket one that's on the right. This should help with cooling as well. Not that I had any overheating issues but should make it even better. So I've just noticed there's quite a bit of a gap between the radiator and the shroud. So we see that is going to hurt us in efficiency. So while it does fit, I don't think this shroud is maybe as good a fit as it is on the factory unit. I don't really know uh, what I can do. Like I sort of thought I could maybe put some, like a rubber seal down there, like sort of a thick one. Whether that's gonna actually make much of a difference, I don't really know. Or I just install it as it is. And if we have any uh, cooling issues, this could be potentially uh, the cause. I think it will still work uh, and it should work pretty good. It should definitely still pull air, just maybe not as efficient as the factory units. Uh, uh, pros and cons. This rain is so nice. Oh. So we've now got everything swapped over, the shrouds all bolted up, uh, swapped over these rubber feet, made sure the uh, drain holes tightened. These ones at the bottom just slipped through. I fitted up the new uh, hose and put the clamp on ready to go. Now we've got to try and refit all this back in the car. So one other thing I noticed when I was looking in the engine bay was this lower rad support. So this car's been in, in, in a minor front ender. You can sort of see this little bit down here is uh, sticking out. And then sort of hard to see, but this piece here is bent. So the first thing we need to put back in is this, uh, I don't know, bracket thing. See, so yeah, you just click that little tray in and you can see this little 
rubber piece here is the locator and there's another one uh, right down there so that just sort of sits in there and now these two holes are where the rubber mounts are going to go on the bottom of the radiator don't look behind your back Chase the light when the world is getting darker I have a dream now we just got to reconnect it basically the reverse procedure um, so we've got this hose here, looks like it'll fit. So yeah, we'll chuck that on and the clamp. And then there's uh, the top hose as well. We'll refit that. I forgot to put the fan in. I forgot to put the fan in. Oh no. There's no way there's enough room. Out it comes. So to disconnect this hose, re-lift it up. And now we've got the fan in there, so I'm gonna reconnect the fan. And then reconnect this and continue on. In theory, this is a pretty easy job, but in reality, it's uh, slow and fiddly and really annoying. I mean, we're getting there, but it's just, it hasn't been very fun. I reckon I've been going for two hours now, and yeah, we haven't even started bleeding it or anything yet, so potentially it's a pretty, pretty big job, so just make sure you factor in a fair bit of time if you're gonna tackle this yourself, if you haven't done it before like I haven't, so. Pause. Right, so I've just reconnected all the intercooler piping, so now we're looking pretty swish. Uh, so yeah, I've reconnected it up here. And also there was that piece underneath here. So re that and connected it. Now we're looking pretty good. Just got to fit up the mounts. So someone in a past life has sheared off this bolt. So this mount is super dodgy. Um, it's just screwed in. This car is so janky. So the radiator doesn't quite sit level, this side sits a bit higher than this side, a fair bit higher. And I think that's again just due to the previous impact the car had in the front. So there's this little placard here that says uh, never open when hot. So that screw there, I'm pretty darn sure, is the bleed. So we're just going to crack that one. And the radiator is now full. I used a 50, roughly 50% mix of uh, the coolant concentrate and then just distilled water. Filled the radiator, uh, it took about five liters, something like that. So I just did a quick bit of reading and you're meant to actually remove this bleed screw while you're filling the system. So I've sort of stuffed it up, but I removed it now and a heap of air sort of cycled through it in and out and it actually spurted out some uh, coolant. So I'm gonna see if I can re-top up the radiator now that this is open. Then I think we refit it and we'll turn it on. Uh, Cause if we turn on the car with this open, coolant is just gonna come out here and not go through. So when I took off that bleed valve uh, coolant and then re-topped up the radiator coolant or um, the distilled water it just looked like, just kept coming out of there at a pretty fast rate. So I had the screw all the way out. Yeah, it definitely bled the system, but I was continually losing the coolant. So I let it sort of pump out, refilled it essentially, and then put the screw back in, topped up the radiator again. Now we're gonna start the car, put the heater on and uh, keep topping up the radiator and leave the cap off and it should just burp out hopefully the rest of the air in the system from there.
so far so good. Although that might be a leak. So I've turned the heater off now. Probably not the best thing to find in your uh, system, but I can't see any more air bubbles coming out. The system is nice and warm now. I've just been keeping an eye on the internal temperature as well, which is holding. I put the radiator cap on and we're just gonna go for a quick drive. So it's been idling for about 10 minutes now, I'd say, and it's holding about what it normally looks like. So I'll just go for a bit of a drive and see if it changes. So just got back, it's been about four or five minutes just driving around and so far no issues. So the temperature seems to be holding. Uh, if there is some air still in the system, which I wouldn't be surprised if there was, uh, it's obviously not causing like a big air lock or anything like that. So the car is still cooling. Um, gonna have to sort of monitor it for leaks over time like all the garage floor is a bit wet from this job and the fact it's raining today so uh, something I'm gonna have to keep an eye on because there are a couple of drips coming from some spots but I don't know if it's from me anyway long story short uh, so that's pretty much is us it that's us done <sighs> been a long day and I just noticed I got back from my test drive and I had that cap off still that's the overflow uh, the radiator feels super hot, but I realized that I didn't plug this in uh, Which I think is the fan not the clutch fan like the thermo fan. So uh, Yeah, there uh, whoops. I just ah, uh, it looks so damn good Run free and dive into the sky Hear the wind crying Awesome when we get rid of these, we get like a majority sort of black going on. Maybe even paint these, I don't know. What do you guys think? Murdered out, it's looking good. Also, I'm a massive amateur uh, gen in general, so if you guys ever notice anything that I do wrong or ways that I could improve, yeah, I'd obviously appreciate it if you guys let me know down in the comments. Tips, tricks, anything you guys have got that'll either help me out in the future or maybe someone out who's gonna do the same job, similar job. Yeah, great. That's what the YouTube community is for. So that is going to be it for this video today, guys. We are all done. So thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. You probably enjoyed it more than I did. But I think it looks really good. And it's obviously something that's been on the to-do list for a while. So hopefully I can stop worrying about my radiator exploding when I'm driving. So thanks for watching, guys. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.